How you doing out there? I'm Lindsay, and this is Knowledge Uprising. Tonight, I will be presenting to you the panel of knowledge number five. And tonight, we have three panelists that are amazing. Guys, introduce yourselves. All right, we got Stephen Harris here. Peace, peace. Ryan here. Halito, Aboriginal Power in the building. Peace. Alito, brother Alito. So, Aboriginal. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Aboriginal, yeah, elaborate a little bit more about Alito, but the people out there don't know what it is and explain to them what it means to be indigenous. Oh, uh, just real quick. Uh, Alito is a greeting. In Choctaw, Chickasaw, and Cherokee native language. Uh, it was also used by the English later on as hey, hi, then later on to hello uh, for a form of greeting. And also adopted by the Algonquin as well. So elaborate on a little bit more about what it is to be indigenous and why you consider yourself to be indigenous. Well, uh, I know myself to be uh, indigenous through uh, historical uh, traditions and uh, lineage and through my genealogy. I've always known who I was, even though I went through a stage where I was wanting to research outside of that due to uh, different uh, circumstances whether it was the pro black movement or the pan uh, yeah. or the black Panther party yeah. or, or the Moors, whatever the case may be. But I yeah. did dive into the Afrocentric information. So, uh, so, so I, I, I hate, I, I hate to uh, pause you and digress from where you're progressing and you believe you ain't about, but for the people that's wondering, uh, when, when you said that, indigenous and and elaborate just just a little more brother indigenous like i said indigenous for, for instance the first inhabitants of the land mass of africa or any particular land continent for that well matter uh will be indigenous so, okay okay thank you brother so now when you said your genealogy for the people out there that don't know what genealogy is, explain it to them. So many words, if you can. Uh, there's different forms of genealogy that you can do. They now got a more recent form of doing it, which is uh, DNA genealogy or ancestral genealogy. But uh, genealogy is just doing the research of tracking down your, uh, your uh, ancestors and uh, family members that came before you through your uh, mother's and your father's lineage. Okay, so when you're saying through the lineage, do, does that mean through the bloodline and the culture or the land which you could have came from? Directly through the bloodline. Yes, directly through the bloodline. Okay, okay. So through your research of genealogy, what are your findings? Well, uh, for instance, for my mother's side, uh, I've done done research and we tracked back down to 1783, 1783, uh, and it's still in Tennessee. Uh, I've tracked down to Tennessee, uh, pretty much the same city that I live in now. It wasn't the same name that it is now, uh. Uh, a lot of historical okay what happened what happened did, did he disobey oh yeah I think he might have left or, yeah, or something he's coming back in <clears throat> yeah, he kicked me out for some reason I don't know what, what happened <laughs> it's all good 
I forgot where it, I was. Yeah, you were talking about from 1783. I guess you went back uh, to your parents and it showed you that. Um, it went back that far. I think you mentioned Tennessee, but it was called something else before Tennessee. Yes, uh, it was actually, uh, it was it was not called Tennessee. It was actually part of the Virginia colonies. So it was just another east state of part uh, separate from Virginia. It was, it was considered Virginia, in other words. It was all continuous land at that point of time. Uh, at that point of time, uh, 1783, of uh, historical documents uh, by the National Archive uh, and also the archival records of Western District of Tennessee and Eastern District of Tennessee that no European settlers had not touched down in Tennessee in se until 1786. And uh, I got a book that maybe you guys can pick up. It's called Natural Aboriginal History of Tennessee. And it talks particularly about the uh, Chickasaw, the Oneida, and the Holston, and the Chickamauga Indians. And uh, that's where my family tribe name come from. My name is on the rose. Uh, we lived on uh, Chickasaw and uh, Chickamauga land. Uh, some of my great uncles had signed the hosting treaties, which was wrongfully uh, not uh, operated correctly, and it was misused and pretty much not in void, and they double-crossed it. My ancestors, which ultimately led into the Urban Renewal Act, or what we better known as the Indian Removal Act, which led to one of the first projects in my community, which was Lonsdale, which is in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, ultimately, the people that uh, inhabited that was some of the first uh, people. I hate to cut you short, but you said the Indian Removal Act. Could you elaborate yeah. a little bit more about that, brother? The Indian Removal Act. Uh, that's what yeah. it's better known as, but it's called the the uh, the Renewal Act. Uh, which so was what, they were, what, what, what was the purposes of this act? They was uh, the uh, the government colonizers that came in had set acts and laws on particular yeah. land due to studious and ge ge uh, geologist reasons, due to safety reasons. They made up different reasons why, which forced the people off of their land. So, yeah. I have okay, a so, couple so quick what, questions. What, what, what were some of the main we reasons they were shut off that land, according to that? Uh, I mean, because if they, if they said it was cut off for reasons, we would like to know those reasons, right? Yes, uh, it was uh, various different reasons. Uh, pretty much the waterways. Uh, we got a lot of big creeks. We got the uh, Hosted uh, River, uh, which leads directly into the Tennessee River. And the Tennessee yeah. River obviously leads to the Mississippi. And so it was a main traffic way. Uh, they wanted some of the hilly areas and in the, uh, in the, in the mountain areas that was rich in uh, fertile land, which they still growing crop there now to this day. Uh, so uh, for various different reasons. I just had a couple quick questions because I, I I don't know a whole lot about the um, Aboriginal or Indigenous movement, or if I don't even know if you call it a movement or or, or however you want to describe it. The the first thing because um, you mentioned back in 1783, like where would, where do you think your ancestors were prior to the 1700s? I believe that my ancestors, uh, possibly could have migrated from the South, somewhere from the South. Uh, in particular, I'm not for sure. I want to say maybe the Georgia region or maybe even Southern, uh, Southern as far as Mexico. Right. Now, do most people that are indigenous, do they think that they didn't come from Africa, but that they were already here in the States? Is that how that Ab works? Absolutely. Uh, we really do not subscribe. I speak for me and I do not speak for all Aborigines. Uh, but I deal with a particular group of people. Uh, we don't subscribe in the out of Africa theory. Okay. Uh, I don't, and I don't think that no geneticists, no uh, universal humanity uh, migrated uh, uh, graph uh, the researchers 
subscribe to the out of Africa theory uh, due to the lack of uh, evidence to support it. It actually kind of debunks itself because you can find it more and more older bones and older structures in various places outside of Africa. And as of two, as of 1999, the into Africa theory had become one of the leading theories in the scientific community. I, never mind, they created the out of Africa theory. I, I couldn't hear what you said. If you don't mind repeating that, brother. If you don't mind alleviating, what gave you the thought to not believe in the out of Africa theory? What made you question that? Well, for instance, the out of Africa theory deals with life starting beginning in Africa. Yeah. All life, human life. That's why they say they found the oldest bones. What was it, Lucy or somebody? Yeah, that's what I've heard too, that the oldest bones were found in Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oldest bones was found in Africa. Right. Which Lucy, which Lucy DNA genetics is only 322 years old, 322,000 years old, even though the bones was dated older. Yet Walter Perry's DNA is older than any any hominid on the list and beyond the list. It's 380,000. So that how was that? I don't know. It's, an, uh, it's actually quite remarkable, according to the scientific community. Right, because I've heard theories too in regards to the indigenous thing that uh, that some, uh, I guess, uh, Indians or Native Americans or whatever you want to, however you so want to, were, uh, were enslaved black the people. Created. It was definitely not Native Americans. Uh, well, we we must be clear, and we must be very very honest with history. People on on every continent was enslaving anybody that was in opposition into what was authority on the land. Uh, so you had the Barbary Coast Wars and then in Africa, and then you got the 711 AD attack with Mauritania with the El Morvis. You got you got the Native Americans in Quetzalcoatl, uh, hey, roughly around uh, the Inca time period, and uh. For all for black righteous folks, what up? How are you doing? I'm sorry, I went to sleep. I just woke up because my dog wants me to take her out. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, what's happening? Peace. Hi, everybody. Peace. Everybody, this is Black for Righteous Folks home. What's up? How you doing out there? I'm better. I'm better after taking a little little nap. How you doing? What you got on your face? What's going on? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I, I said I'm going to put on a mask tonight. I feel like putting on a mask because so I'll put oh. on a mask. Oh, shit. I, I'll put on a mask. It's a black mask tonight. I got on my leather jacket. I ain't playing. He's a black mask. Let me pull out my pen. Don't, who are you don't taking out with that? Who are you taking out? Who you ain't taking out? <laughs> <laughs> you crazy, though. He look like a cartoon character. But hey, better look, <laughs> better look that way than be that way, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> real shit. <laughs> hey, I, I just have one other question, real quick, for the brother. So, because I've heard stories that in regards to. Um, uh, people of African descent or blacks that considered themselves indigenous were slaves of Indians that were already there, or maybe might've been, maybe because they were slaves or maybe they might've married yeah, into the family. Heard. And I that's why it. they feel that they got the like rights and stuff. What's your, what's your feeling about that? Oh, I want to talk about well, that too. I'm going to let him go. Well, first. yeah, actually, yeah. The story just get twisted a little bit. Uh, I, if you ever heard of the Boma Park Mirrors, you ever heard of those? It's some oh, of the yeah, oldest, yeah. it's some of the oldest Inca uh, writings and stories that's that's ever been seen. Uh, they found in some of the pyramids in uh, Peru, and also in uh, South America, I believe Argentina. Mm -hmm. Well, with all these uh, Mendoza Codex, it, it shows heavy melanated people with beards. You can tell the distinguishing between. Uh, what you would call a black person and what you would call a Eurasian or a typical uh, Mexican for the lack of argument. Uh, 
So uh, you see these heavy melanated people grabbing them up by the hair, groping them, what you call sacking the in, uh, the enemy uh, in various different uh, photographs and pictures that they display showing the people who ran the land in opposition to the people who was entering the land for the first time. And it shows them coming on boats as well. So, yeah, we, we sure did. Uh, and it also shows us tying them, what we would call tying them behind the back, tying them and gagging them, not gagging them, but yeah. on feet, feet to hands, right? And not only that, we would take an oyster paint, some blue oyster paint that, that has a very strong dye that would stain your clothes or skin for a long time, and we would strip the invader naked and put a blue ring around them similar to what you see done in prison clothes with the black and white and uh that's all displayed on the mendoza codexes now i want to i want to know from the brother here because you said native american now have you ever run into anyone that's preferred to be called a native american in the past because of their generation of history or have you ever uh, come across someone that didn't mind saying the word Indian. Well, uh, Native American is the people that you think are Indians today. These are the people that's typically on reservations mm -hmm. out West Coast. These people are pretty much people that came from other land masses, such as uh, the the European and, and various African groups that has came over here. They're just another group that came over here as well. As a matter of fact, their uh, scientists support the Barren Strait story, which talks about them coming over here through a land bridge throughout Canada and Russia. So Native Americans would not be the correct term for the indigenous people here. It would be Aboriginal or Aborigines. Okay, okay. Hmm. That's interesting. So where do you think people, because I always, I always thought of life as being created in Africa. So uh, if, um, if, if, if black folk or people of color or whatever didn't just come from Africa, you're saying that they were already here in the, in the Americas. Or in the United States, anyway, not including like Mexico or Canada or any of these other places, right? Yeah, I'm saying I'm saying North, South, and Central. When I say America, I, I, I me in my mind, I will clarify for you, brothers. When I say America, I'm including from Canada all the way down to Brazil, all of North America, America, the whole a whole North American continent, the whole America continent, right? Okay. From North to South, right? Hmm. Because see, the way I always thought it, like I thought everybody was Afro um, centric, Afro of Afro descent, and were brought over as slaves. So you might have had some in Belize, maybe some in uh, Brazil, you know, some in the states, some in Jamaica or Haiti, or where I just thought they were as they were, you know, we were getting sold off. We just went to different places, and so my understanding was that the um, the natives that were here at the time also had slaves and through marriage and slaves we those rights that we have like you said when you were starting back to 1783 i'm thinking that maybe it, it was possible that your people might have been part of a group that um got together with some of these natives or indigenous people and that's how you came about or through marriage or what have you but you're saying that's not the case like because you because before 1783 you you're you um you're thinking that you came from down south from somewhere else well what i'm saying is before 1783 it couldn't have been blacks mixing in with other indians because like i said at this time no european settlers had touched down and the and, the, and according to the at a, the transatlantic story the european settlers is who brought the african so if, if European settlers didn't touch down in Tennessee, then you know Africans did not touch down in Tennessee. See, because I'm thinking about, like, you know, in 1492 when Columbus came and he killed a whole bunch of 
uh, native. Like if if they would have brought slaves over, if they would have just eventually you said, migrated you said, down. You said he killed a whole bunch of natives. Can you can you clarify I mean, that? I mean, I'm thinking that he killed them. When he didn't, Columbus kill some. Like when he no. came here, I thought he uh, killed some people. No, but what he did was he 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 took fifteen hundred uh, of them back to Europe. And when they got there, they called them blackamoors. And you see the depictions. Didn't did, did some of that fifteen hundred not survive on the way back over there? Excuse me. Didn't yeah, some of that fifteen hundred sure. not survive on the way back yeah, over to Europe? I'm pretty sure some because of because of the disease I'm, at sea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure some of them didn't survive. But he he took fifteen hundred from off the shores. Whether they made it to the next one, right. or whether all of them made it. Uh, is not really clear, but what but what is clear is right. the depiction of what he called these people. So he called mm. them, which is which is a Spanish word, and he also called them Negro. Negro, right. Negro is saying. a Spanish yeah. word for black. Now, right, right. Now, now what I'm saying is how you when you see Native Americans or when you see what what, what you think is Native American, would you consider these people Negro or swarthy? No. And we know that the number one thing when Christopher Columbus wanted to do when he came over here, it's in his laws, was inseminate the people and, and, and colonize them and get them to convert okay, to Okay, okay, brother. Okay, brother. We we getting deep in the past right now. So I'm going to ask you this. What does it mean to be indigenous right now in the time you are living in as in 2019 what does it mean to be indigenous and that how do you feel and how does it inspire you to want to know more about your culture right right and that's a that's a beautiful question i appreciate you asking that question uh, always brother come on that's now. why my name is aboriginal power uh because being aboriginal on this land is power uh if you ever heard of treaties, treaties only consist of one group of people, right? That's the Indians, the indigenous people of this land. And we all know that the U.S. Constitution was formed by the people, the indigenous people of this land. And the preambles that tell you was written for the people and by the people. And it goes into detail and it tells you exactly who these people was, which was people who was residents or non-residents, right? So what it means to be Aboriginal is is apply and have control of your land and truly have freedom. <clears throat> In order so, to do that, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. So who? What do you think? So who are these people now? Like when you see like these Cherokees or even like the people from Mexico or whatever that got mixed with the Spanish because they got conquered. Where who? What type of people were they then? Do you think? Like that, that they call Indians now, right? Or Native well, Americans term, now, and these other ones. The word, the term Turkey means mix, mixed blood. So, when you, by the time you hear in Cherokee, and you even seeing photographs of Cherokee, the, the 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 indigenous people had already been disseminated into European uh, ways. Uh, as a matter of fact, they had already took on European names such as Johnson. Roberts, Jones, Smith, so forth and so on. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Ooh, 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 ooh. Now I have uh, another indigenous sister in the building. Shauna, how you doing out there, Shauna? Good. About to roll me one as I listen. <laughs> hey, hey. hey. So while you rolling one, if you don't mind, alleviate to the folks what it means to be indigenous. Uh, and pro pro American, you know, black. That's it. I don't really care if it's um actually blood relatedly true. I don't care how we get tied into the notion of believing in ourselves, helping ourselves, caring about ourselves. Whatever we, whatever way we need to do to get there, that's all I care about. But I do believe that we're not similar to African. Just in my heart, I don't believe the the hype that I was. My whole family's from Africa. I don't believe in that. I, so I just, agree with you with with you on that. So yeah. what separates us melanated, copper colored Africans from 
well, well, no, I can't call us Africans, but no, well, what separates us is, is our experiences. Well, well, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying. Our experiences. Right, the the separate word us. came out wrong. Don't y'all. Mm-hmm. Our experience is not the same and our goal is not the same and the end game is not the same, but we're being <clears throat> played with right now with Dr. Bombay and um, Philip advice, whatever guy and all these other Jekylls talking about Africa. So all the about the Zaza Ali situation. I haven't really heard too she's much. A, she is. She's a fraud prostitute. That's what she is. Yeah, I'm not hip to her. Tell me exactly who she is. I just know the name, but I know nothing about oh, her person. All I've known is since I've been on YouTube that she is a guru, a supposed uh, guru of like uh, bettering your spirituality, you know, yeah. coming within, being like kind of a nature boy, but a clean version, yoga version, a biracial version of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So um, she comes with all this talk of bettering yourself, enlightening yourself and coming to peace and coming into being a feminine energy that's positive yeah. and all this other type of talk. But <clears throat> what she did was she hustled a lot of black women trying to rub elbows against her, which what? doesn't do anything for our, doesn't do anything for us as Americans. But looking at her, I guess, gave them the inspiration to pay money. And they went and spent so much money in advance to try to meet up with her, I guess, months later. And she knew in advance that this retreat or whatever resort, whatever they were supposed to do, was not going to happen because she didn't pay her her portion of keeping the place together for yeah. these people to come. Yeah. And she knew 30 days in advance that she wasn't going to do it. But what made it fraudulent is the fact that once she knew she wasn't going to do it, she went on and pretended as if she still was. And she pretended with these women to go ahead and still pay, still, you know, pay their um, spa stuff that they were going to do all this other talk of how they're going to be Zen like and all that yeah. still pay money towards the trips, still pay money towards all this planning. And she yeah. knew that it wasn't going to go down. So she was trying to drip dry all the sisters in her pocket. And so honest, what, I, I, I hate to cut you off. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about bro polite? The same thing, the same difference. I, mean, I just think that brother, brother polite is um the man of words of the same thing that she does. But she, you know, unfortunately is propped up by a lot of uh, Negro dudes who are lusting after her light ass. And they're thinking that's the reason for um saving her. But it's about principle. It's about your integrity. It's about your word. And she didn't keep it. And for her to um, add to the insult of saying that we are expendable, like letting it be known that she could live without us and she don't really need us type of talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? If people don't rise up and say to hell with people treating them like any kind of way, then I guess they love to be treated any kind of way. So I would suggest that people just fucking stop promoting these, uh, want to be gods these people that claim to have all this knowledge of self and you know get over whatever and love yourself and and don't follow behind somebody's words because it's not helping well see i i believe i, I don't believe in jesus christ but i do believe that i am god just as i believe in you all are god <laughs> I think we're many gods, but, but I don't think we're God. You can't, you can't re uh, make yeah, my. Yeah, I didn't say it. the Creator. I didn't say the Most High. Yeah, but I believe that you are God, just like I am God, like on this plane of existence. Mm -hmm. Well, we're co-signers for what we accept, I guess. But I would just say that um, I don't want to liken myself to believing I am. A god or anything that's just too uh why wouldn't you have the sound proclamation and then it's in debt you're rationalizing that you see everything is what it is and it's because what it is yeah it's, your phone was breaking up my hello? phone was breaking hello yeah you i heard me? a little bit about i heard yeah i heard a little bit what you were saying you said it is what it is that's all i caught Oh man, I was saying you should make the strongest proclamation about who you are. 
But like I said, I ain't knocking anybody's belief system because I don't want to alter that and put you in a realm of reality to where you will be in confusion. Mm-hmm. But everybody has their own belief. But like you said, if you say you're something, you got to understand why you are that. And if you say you are that, you got to be able to alleviate people and tell them why you are that, right? All I'm saying is words is not work. You know, we, we all can talk, but can we back up what, what we're talking about? And that's the problem that we have. We like to hear the sweet little words coming out of people's pretty little mouths, but we don't need them to do anything that matches what they say. And that's why we keep getting played. And that's why we can't do a damn thing for ourselves because we're still propping up one person at a time as our master, as our idols. And that's why we keep being played like we are. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. You guys want to comment off that? I agree. Yeah, I also agree. Yeah, I wasn't too familiar with the gal. Just looking at some pictures of her real quick, and um, it seems like there's a whole. Shauna's a cool person, man. Shauna, Shauna, if you don't mind, would you like to read Doomsday Party or one of your poems that you have located? I don't know where it is right now because I cleaned my room and I kind of like put it up, so it might take me a minute to find it. So, um. If you give me like a little while to look for, I will. But um, but I'll have to smoke and I'll come right back and look for it. But um, yeah, I'll look for it. Give me a, give me like five minutes. I'll be right back. Okay, Shauna's gonna be right back. Any okay, right back with a pool. Right? off what Shauna said. Yeah, I was gonna say it seems like there's a lot of um interesting things going on in this uh so-called conscious uh movement community, whatever you want to call it. Um, the black country. yeah, and it seems um, like I'm I'm a big fan of people following uh, themselves. You know, what I mean, it's yeah. always good. It's definitely good to network people and do things, but it seems like uh, a lot of these cats are getting you know one scam after another from everybody in the hood. You know, they're yeah. Just, yeah, they're taking uh, taking advantage of everybody, going from one person to the next. Yeah. Correct, and that's and that's why I feel like this movement is is a true movement because it really comes from the spirit, and it's a story that nobody's never. So, told so when before. you say this movement is a true movement, you're referring to what movement, brother? Well, it's what they call the movement. It's really just a lifestyle, and it's going to be a continuous way of life that has to be. Yeah, and uh, and it's only coming into your proper position of knowing who you are. So, you know, it's only right for us to do the research. And that's why it's so prominent in this story kind of rubs people maybe the wrong way. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting. I was going to say that I uh, it seems like the way history has been so um, tampered with people don't really uh, uh, know a whole lot of stuff. I I did just join the other day when we were on a panel last time. A guy named uh, Takara was on the line and he mentioned uh, Tribe Up. So I so I, I I joined, I signed up for a Tribe Up. I really don't know a whole lot about it yet. I just set up a profile uh, last week and then haven't been on it since. But but what do you think about the Tribe Up? Do you, are you on that, as on Tribe Up? Yeah, I am. Actually, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, man, it's, that's what it is. It's another alternative to uh, get the information across and, uh, you know, and that's pretty much the uh, the slogan for the community, uh, which which means linking with a brother that's like minded, that's really to, to take the action and 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 the and the necessary steps to put you in your right position. If you want to reclassify yourself properly up under your correct identity, if you want to create your trust, if you want to uh, then ultimately create your government or maybe go into a form of government that's already situated that's the route you need to go so you can be fully protected while operating throughout the united states you know it's just funny because i hear so many uh uh different theories of of how we got here either like either we were the original hebrew israelites were the original jews or yeah, where, that, 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 we're natives stories, or we're brought from Africa. You know, there's so many different ones. Yeah, and these stories been around since the 1920s, as roughly, matter of fact, 
all the stories you just named uh, from the Moors, from the Hebrews, from the natives, the stories all popped up in the early 1920s. Uh, but it kind of, it's kind of, it kind of was a watered down version. But everything happens for a relief uh, for a reason. If you believe in, in in light spectrums and information reaching people, it takes time, and maybe the time is being now because. We ain't never been at a time period where so much information is privy to us. So, you know, I, I believe, you know, for me doing my research, I done, I done brought a lot of stuff to the table that probably a lot of people had never known, period. Like, people stand with the Pan-African movement, which, you know, I respect the brothers and what they do. The primordial heights of the Pan-African movement is Kemet. The reason they stand with Kemet is because of the pyramids, the structure, the science, the gold, and the dating of the pyramids. Well, you know, for somebody to go out and beyond and say, well, we got gold here, we got science here, and just to go along with it, we got pyramids that predates those. We got pyramids that's just as big as those. We got more pyramids. So, if 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 pyramids so what's your thoughts on the African pyramids? Huh? That's located in Egypt. So what's your thoughts on the African pyramids that are located in Egypt? Well, uh my theory might be a little theory, a little different than what a lot of people do. I, I usually try to deal with, with data. Oh, that's here, bro. I want I I'm not gonna say that it's fake or nothing like that, which I've heard that around. Uh I believe that First off, let me just give you a premise because I'm going to have to lead into it if you don't mind. Uh, Go ahead. Do your thing. Africa has roughly about 300 pyramids in the whole continent. According to the Americas, which I'm meaning from Canada all the way down to South America, has roughly over 100,000 pyramids. Okay? Uh, so... If someone who created the science of pyramids would have obviously, this is my opinion, would have implemented it more times and would have did it on a larger scale. Right? And would have had them older as well. Somebody who created them would have had older pyramids. I mean, that's just common sense. So when you look at pyramids in Egypt, we can deal with the oldest ones in Khufu, right? They're dated at 2600 BCE. We got some that's roughly dated at 32. They only did so, one pyramid. So, so what you saying these dates? These days, I'm not saying they're totally accurate, but you know we're well, dealing yeah, with. Now, I, I get what you're saying, but saying these dates, these dates are in reference to what when they were supposedly done before this or after that. Like, well, well, 2600 BCE will be roughly around uh 20 uh 4600 years ago. Right, you take twenty six, add it on to the two thousand, what year two thousand, whatever we in, on to that, right? Twenty six hundred, right? A little bit over twenty. I mean, forty six hundred years. Excuse me. Uh, take two thousand, add it to a little bit over three, and you got a little bit over five thousand years, right? That's how you do that, and that's what it's in reference to. Uh, the reason I say that to say this is, if if the pyramids was if the science of building pyramids was created in Africa, why leave out of Africa to implement it only to go back to implement small proportions? So what I'm saying is, and what I'm not saying is what geneticists are saying, right? And, 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 and anthropologists are saying is that there was a group of Americans that's interdiluvian. Right, due to due to migration, they can prove this. This is why Africa has the highest form of diversity. Why? Due to a population bottleneck, 
in a and in 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 a in a, in a, in a after effect of a population bottleneck is a genetic bottleneck. What happens with a genetic bottleneck? It gives you high risk for mutations. That's when you start seeing the white person gene pop up. And various different genes pop up. So basically, when you say bottleneck, you just got a, a bunch of different ethnic groups. Well, from different cultures mixing with each other in Africa to make what we know is now as Africans. Right. Well, Since, well, what, what, what I'm saying Europeans. is Europeans. What I'm saying I, I'm is trying, I'm trying to understand, it, brother. Okay. What what I'm saying is uh, when, you, when you say the bottle cap. Elaborate a little bit more because this is my first I, time hearing it. I, I'm gonna elaborate a little bit. If you go through some of the earliest depictions, which I gave y'all the Mendoza codexes, and I can give you the NX Tail Morrison codexes, uh, which which is known for the phenotype and variations of indigenous people that ran this land. You had lights that kind of looked like your grandma that was real kind of light skinned. You had one that looked like maybe a dark uncle, and it was various different phenotypes. So, And what Genetics is saying is America at one point had the highest diversity. This is, a, this is what Genetics can prove through the Walter Perry DNA. Uh, which now, the highest diversity in country is Africa. They said the only reason that is is due to a population bottleneck. I'm back whenever you guys want me to do the poem. Mm. So if the same question. Yeah. Um the knowledge freeze up? Huh? That was the thing if knowledge froze. Oh. I was just gonna say ask one more question. Like, so I know you did the DNA test or your um uh, how did what made you uh is it that what is how you came to the conclusion of the indigenous thing, or were you did you look at all other theories prior to that? Well, I, I did I did not do a DNA test actually. Uh, I actually don't even subscribe to the DNA test in particular. Uh, I'd rather do it through uh, paperwork, family uh, birth records, uh, historical church records, which most uh, black Americans, for the lack of argument, families used to store a lot of their hit family records in the church, and uh, which would be usually your family church is what they would call your family church. Uh, so uh, that's that's really the best way, and then go down to your city council building and your city records building, and then go on from there, man. You know. I think knowledge up rising left for a second. Yeah, he'll pop back on because yeah, we definitely want to check out that that poem. You guys want me to do it or wait for yeah, him no, to come yeah. back? He's already oh. heard it, but I can wait a little longer if he needs to hear it again himself. That's okay. You guys keep talking, but hey, I don't know who's all the, on the panel. I didn't really get everybody's name. Can I yeah, know who you guys yeah, are? Again, uh, this is Stephen Harris. I, I'm trying to think. I might have been on a panel with you before a few weeks ago, I think. We were on a panel together. Um, Maybe. Um, Whose panel? I don't know. I've been on a few. Um, it but was, it, this was, is... it, was, it was knowledges. I think you might um it might be me, you, and another cat. Uh, a cat oh, yeah. from LA. Um, I think somebody from Canada, right? Was there somebody? The from, yeah, there was. Yeah, there was somebody from Canada too. I think. Yeah. Toronto. Oh, yeah. yeah, and the other guy. Um. Uh. Oh, Aaron. Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. Collins. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's Aaron, right. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm real bad with names. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, um, Steven, yeah. Uh, you had my avatar on last time around. That's right. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's cool. So yeah. Um. This four black righteous folks. I um, <clears throat> been doing more talking oh, on my on my um channel. Just to try to like weigh in on a different perspective because I'm tired of everybody talking the same way. You know what I mean? I'm tired of everybody yeah. agreeing with everybody. That shit is, is, is getting me out of, out of, it's making me crazy. So I want to be original and stick for what I believe is correct and talking about and talking like and being like. So that's all I can say. 
Right. It's really a way of life. It's not just about speaking. It's about yeah. literally acting and, and really uh, in, indulging into your culture, even though some shit is pretty much embedded into your DNA. So you naturally still indulge into certain traditions and, and customs that was part of maybe your ancestry's uh, mm-hmm. culture. So, What's your name? I didn't get your name. This is Aboriginal Power. Peace. Halito. Did I meet you before? Halito. I'm, I'm originally from Toledo a long time ago, rather. Not a long time, but years ago. Toledo, Ohio. That sounds like Toledo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the indigenous name, too. So you should do some research on it. Wait a minute. Um, Ryan, Ryan, where are you from again? Uh, peace, peace to uh, the sister of here. I'm Ryan. Uh, I'm from Kansas, unfortunately. Kansas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you, 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 you didn't make it. You didn't, you didn't yeah, make it sound you, good. Yeah, <laughs> That's for damn sure. You, you made it Where sound is. really dreadful. <laughs> in Kansas City, Kansas, or Missouri? <laughs> no, I'm from the state of Kansas. Okay, I've been the right to live in Denver, be, Colorado. It's so got to be better than one. that. No, it can't be no. that bad. <laughs> Dude, no, I, I'm done with this four seasonal nonsense uh, right now we got that cold front you know we, we on that winter and stuff and i ain't down for that I like oh that. i'm in california but you guys don't get no snow do you oh yeah we get snow we just got done with some i'm gonna be snow. right back oh okay oh yeah i don't like snow so i don't miss ohio for that part of it yeah like see we just got like a big palace now and we still have a little bit here on the ground i'm just like Man, oh, that sucks. Oh, yeah, like I need snow. Well, it don't last what two, three months only. Uh, no, it can go longer than that. It just all depends on uh, who wants to pee in Mother Nature's uh, cereal bowl and make her mad and make it like snow and stuff here. Okay, is there a lot of black people in Kansas? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like we have like. And it all depends on like where you go though too, and like what town, what city you're at. Like mm-hmm. the town I'm in, it's a little country bumpkin little town right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm in that little country bumpkin nonsense. I hate it. I want my city back. <laughs> you better enjoy the fresh air while you can. If you come back to the city, you're gonna be um withering up like like most of us are. You know, I want to go in the country and come visit the city. I'm tired of being in the city. Oh, see, I, I, I-